I want to talk about hips today, specifically my hips. I have to say though, my hip is killing me. I actually need, despite all this hiking that I do and all this, all these outdoor adventures that I do with Brenda, I actually have a bad hip. I actually have two, two bad hips, but my right hip is really bad and the left hip is sort of like in between bad, but I'm in quite a bit of pain and, it, and unfortunately the pain levels have, have become a little bit more constant and this hip problem has really been a, it's been a problem for actually many decades now. I actually had a childhood hip condition called slipped capital femoral epiphysis and the, the acronym for that is Skippy. And it's basically an adolescent hip disorder that occurs during the growths when you're still growing. And what ends up happening is the, the top of the hip ball, the ball joint slides off the neck of the femur bone and it slips along the little growth plate, which is where the bone grows. So that growth plate is made of cartilage. And so the, the top part of the ball slides and then um, it results in the hip becoming misshapen and a little bit deformed. So they had to go in and they had to put pins in both of my hips, which the pinning stabilizes the slip. So it prevents the hip from slipping anymore, but it, Unfortunately, it doesn't fix the problem. It leaves it leaves the hip in the the misshapen position or the it leaves it in the altered position. So I was basically left with two abnormal hip joints since about the age of 13 because they go in and they, they take the pins out once you reach skeletal maturity so the hip can no longer slip. <clears throat> but unfortunately, they don't put the ball back into the correct anatomical position. Therefore, my hips have been abnormal since, you know, the age of 13. And I just turned 49 last August. So, I mean, 35 years now, I guess I've been, <laughs> I've been functioning on abnormal hip joints and I've reached a point that they've, they've pretty much degraded now. So I have severe osteoarthritis in my right hip and the left hip is moderately arthritic. So I'm actually hoping that this year, 2024, is going to be the year that I finally eliminate these hip problems once and for all. And my goal is to have hip replacement surgery done first on the right hip and then sometime later in the year have, you know, have the left hip replaced. So I'm hoping to get the right hip replaced, you know, hopefully within maybe the next two to three months if all goes well. So... I'm expecting to have a you know an excellent result naturally and then you know hopefully have the left hip replaced maybe two three four months later so I'm expecting 2024 to be a huge year at least in terms of me being able to fix these hip problems which have been pretty much dogging me my entire adult life hey I have to make a, an amendment to my hip video um, if you notice my hip x-rays you're going to notice that I still have pins in both hips and I'm, in the video I talked about having my hips pinned and then going in and having the pins removed at some point which is what they did but unfortunately in my case between the time that they inserted the pins in my hips and the time that I went back in to have the, the pins removed the pins broke actually I had two pins in each hip and three of the pins ended up breaking during the eight months or so that I had the that I had the pins in there. So when I went back in in December of January 88 for them to remove the pins, they they ended up only removing the pieces of the pins that were closest to the skin or you know the, there were like three pieces um, three or four pieces that they removed and they they ended up removing the pieces that were not deeply embedded into the bone. So that's why when you look at the x-ray you're gonna see like, you're going to see like different pins and you know in each hip so they weren't able to remove the pins basically to make a long story short because the pins broke between the time that i had the pins inserted and when they were supposed to remove them so i just wanted to clarify that i know that some of you with a very discerning eye are going to be able to look at the x-rays and say like hmm it looks like he still has pins in there and which i do but now you know why <laughs> um you know growing up you, you know growing up i was i was very athletic though 
despite my hip limitations and despite you know having abnormal hip joints i was still very active you know i led a very active life i was a cyclist you know i used to go mountain biking i used to belong to a boxing gym you know i used to do some boxing at one point in time i was always an avid weightlifter <clears throat> You know, I, I was an avid outdoorsman, hiking and all that stuff. So it wasn't like I was dis disabled per se, but my hips just were never normal. So I had to work around my hip limitations. And that wasn't easy. You know, it was kind of, it was kind of a, it was a burden to bear, you know, because when you're young and you're, you know, especially when you're a young male growing up, you know, you don't, you want to feel strong. You want to feel strong you want to feel capable you don't want to have a physical infirmity of any type and unfortunately for me my hips were very limiting to what i could do you know my hips were always stiff i never had normal hip range of motion you know my internal rotation was almost zero so you know my hip function was definitely was definitely limited so as a result of that there were certain activities that i just couldn't really do all that well <clears throat> I apologize if, if I sound out of breath it's because my 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 sinuses are a bit plugged right now <laughs> so I'm breathing out of my mouth but you know I always wanted to get involved with martial arts you know I always wanted to get involved with like karate or even like taekwondo but I couldn't really do it because my hips were too stiff so I naturally naturally I gravitated towards boxing boxing was fairly you know I could still box pretty well I could I was always good with the hands you know, so, and I didn't have to rely so much on my hip, my hip joints. <clears throat> but, you know, nevertheless, you know, growing up, having to deal with hip limitations as a young male was, psychologically, that was very difficult. You know, I had, I had a lot of psychological issues because of my hip problems. But, you know, nevertheless, like I said, I, I was still able to do quite a bit. So... You know, thankfully, I was still able to lead a very active life. And, and even now, you know, as bad as my hips are right now, I'm still active. You know, I'm still I can still do quite a bit. I can still lift a lot of weights. I can still, you know, I can still use the cardio equipment and I can still do a fair amount of walking, as you can see, you know. So it's not like I'm disabled, disabled, but I'm definitely limited. And my hip my hips are becoming more problematic you know, because my hips are the way that they are, you know, it makes my knees hurt. It makes my feet hurt. I have lower back pain. Um, my right leg is over a half an inch shorter than my left leg now because of the, 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 the degeneration. So I have to put a little tiny lift in my right shoe to sort of balance out my gait. <clears throat> so, I mean, these are just some of the issues that are, you know, currently going on. And, you know, it's just to the point now where I'm just really tired of dealing with all these hip problems. I mean, it just sucks. I mean, it's been such a long, a long road and it's been such a burden to carry. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that 2024 is gonna be the year that I finally eliminate these hip problems once and for all. Once and for all. <laughs> so that's all I wanna say. I mean, I've never really come out and actually spoke at length about these problems with anyone. I mean, maybe one or two people, but that's pretty much it. You know, this has always been a struggle. It's always been a private struggle for me. And I've done my best to sort of, you know, work around the problem and work around the struggles. And here I am at 49 and I think it's, I just think it's time to finally, you know, replace these faulty hip joints with some nice shiny new prosthetic implants. And, you know, fortunately nowadays, hip replacements have come a long way. So the, the materials that they use nowadays are, are much better than they were just, you know, 20 years ago, you know, so the surgical techniques have improved. You know, they're doing minimally invasive surgery. They're doing basically outpatient surgery nowadays. So more than likely I'm, I'll probably go in in the morning and then, you know, I'll probably be released in the evening, you know, when I have the hip done. And then obviously the second hip as well. So, <clears throat> I'm actually looking forward to it. You know, I'm a little fearful of the surgery, obviously, because, you know, I don't, it's not normal to want to go into the hospital to get cut on. <laughs> but I know it's not going to be that big of a deal. So that's all I wanted to say, I guess. I guess this is just sort of a sort of my way of venting and maybe 
Maybe this is sort of a rant on my part, just to put it out there, I guess. Even though this is Brenda's channel, <laughs> maybe I'll put maybe I'll put this on my own channel if I create my own channel, but you know, I don't know. I'm just putting it out there on the internet. Like George W. Bush would say, putting it out there on those internets, out there on your Googles. <laughs> so that's about it, I guess. You know, for all of you that have hip problems, I'm sorry, I salute you. I know what a pain in the ass it can be, but um, there's hope. <laughs>